What's going on guys and welcome back to DSG and in today's video we're going to be going through my tips for you guys for Ascension Campaign Phase 1 or Stage 1. Now we can kind of break this up into two parts really. So 1A through 1E, that's going to be the key part and really the bottleneck for a lot of people and pretty much everyone who's gone through Ascension Campaign, that's going to be the main bottleneck for you guys, 1A through 1E, because these are the, you actually go against the five legendary teams in the game, excluding Ralph, who's now the sixth legendary team. But you'll be going up against the five legendary teams in the game. Some are a little bit easier than others, uh, but in general, these are going to be the biggest bottleneck for you guys. Now, 1F through 1Q, they're a little bit easier. Uh, they still have some difficulties here and there, but in general, they're much easier to go through than 1A through 1E. And just kind of break down what these gears do. So you have vision fragments over here. That's gonna be your equivalent to dream fragments at tier eight. And then you have these flowers over here, which are equivalent to your essences in tier eight. So pretty essential pieces uh, in just in general though, because of raids, when the next raid comes around, these honestly may not be as important as these pieces over here, which are the faction pieces. So these are actually the ones who are gonna give you the most value, I think, rather than these, because in general, these, if they're equivalent to what they are in the tier eight materials, such as essences and dream fragments, you can have an excess amount of them most of the time. Like dream fragments, I think I have about like 4,000 of them or something like that. So though you will have an excess of them. Uh, so these aren't actually, I think, gonna be the most important uh, pieces or at least nodes. It's gonna be these ones down here. So these are like the gatekeepers to the ones you're really gonna need later on to farm and whatnot. When you just looking forward, these are just the exact same thing, except the difference between stage two and stage one. Stage one, you have a max attempt amount. In stage two, you don't have a max attempt amount. That's the biggest difference between them. Uh, and of course, you get all the first time prizes here and whatnot rewards so that's always something to look forward to anyways let's go back to phase one and i'm just gonna go through the team that i've been using for this and uh kind of show you guys the team suggestions that i have for you guys so in general this is going to be your team esmeralda and quasimodo you kind of can't not choose them uh, you have to choose them no matter what, because unless you have a Frollo that is more leveled up, you're probably not going to be watching this video because you've probably already gone through this already. You're probably a big spender. So this is really for those who are kind of getting to 65 and trying to get, or maybe even just trying to get through Ascension campaign in general. You've been there for a while, just struggling. Hopefully this can help you guys. But Esmeralda and Quasi, they're going to be your go-to ones here because most people don't have Frollo at a usable level. And then you have Beast, Sean Yu and Bell and Sean Yu is the lead that I would definitely go for just because he's really gonna the speed boost you know is just pretty much since the beginning of DSA has been really useful so Sean Yu still gets to be usable here which is awesome because if you invested him a long time ago you still can use him here you have Beast and Bell and really with Beast and Bell it's gonna be the taunting that uh, Beast does so Bell can activate it as well with her first special and Beast of course can do it with his special so when you guys use him in tandem he'll be able to do AoEs and taunt at the same time my biggest strategy for you guys is to kind of be timely and really plan out when you're going to use those taunts and those aoe's because it's going to be very key quasimodo my biggest suggestion for you guys is actually not to use this at all because you don't want him to uh, gain protect you don't want him to do that you want him to just not really get per taunting or anything like that so my suggestion is only use his basic and only use his second special. That's it. So that he doesn't get any uh, protection, doesn't like taunt himself or anything, anything like that. When it comes with Esmeralda, her Feast of Fools is going to be very key. Be very, very strategic when you use this. I prefer using it on the last stage of any node, but you can use it in earlier stages if you wanted to, um, if you're kind of in a crunch. And uh, for usability wise, I would do that. Uh, and this special, especially where to have her in terms of placement, isn't going to be as very effective because for the mere fact that it's not only going to cleanse Quasimodo. If you're wondering what other teams you could use, you could use um, for Kingdom. I have used Ana before just because of her special here. Uh, this one, 
some things never change grants the haste grants it the speed meter boost and also increases magic so that's why i do use it from time to time if if i want to shake it up but mainly sean Yu's lead is going to be essential for this one now, if you're wondering, if you're a bit of a spender and, and you have a bigger roster, like if you have Namari, a lot of people use Namari. If you have Frollo, use Frollo versus any, either, either of them, Quasimodo, in or Esmeralda. It's up to you. And of course, if you have like maybe a higher end Sheriff or a Mother Gothel or something like that, I've seen them use them too. But um, for most people, this seems to be the most attainable team to get, or even the Sean Yu one, of course. So. That's why I, I use this team. Uh, I know some people may complain, but Beast is a legendary. That's like pay to win. Guys, come on. Beast has been out for eight months. At this point, if you didn't go for Beast at eight months, it's kind of a choice. If you are a newer player, you probably already have like one or two legendaries as you're approaching level 65. So make Beast maybe your third one or try and focus towards that. Uh, but really, Let's stop the complaining about pay to win, free to play, whatever the case may be. Because honestly, if a character's been out for almost a year, such as Beast, six, uh, eight months at this point, he's free to play, guys. He's been out there long enough. Compared to Frollo, who's only been around for like, what, maybe two months at best, I think, when he came out. Totally different situation. So that's why I say Beast, his team's really available there. He's come around several times already. He's probably think, gonna be one of the ones coming up next uh, in terms of the um legendary so you know honestly let's just give it a shot you can definitely go for him he's not pay to win whatsoever um now i'm going to talk about how i got through this so i had these guys all at seven stars except asmeralda who was four stars at the time of completion of the ascension campaign stage one um and that was very difficult i will say because esmeralda of course at four stars and level 60 or level 50 when i had it, i think it was level 60 but she um she only had like 8,000 health granted everyone here was geared to your seven um except beast who was geared to her eight so out of the five characters i had four geared to your sevens completing this four seven stars one geared to your eight and one four star character it wasn't the greatest roster whatsoever and but i was able to scrum through it now, in terms of spells, I had the Cauldron, and I had uh, Bucket of Toy Soldiers. Toy Soldiers is there to give the extra damage, basically. And uh, Cauldron's there for the magic, because you do need it for Beast and Bell to do, their AO to, to do the AoE for Beast. That was the main Catalyst Freezing Cauldron. You, use, you can use different spells. I've seen people use different spells and whatnot. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys some background gameplay here as well. And kind of discuss my game plan when i look at these so uh, in terms of the frozen one probably one of the easier ones out of the five uh, and really the goal is once you get to the third phase you're gonna want to go for anna so once you're at that final stage of that first node go for anna and then go for elsa and then after that most likely you're gonna have to go to kristoff because kristoff is gonna be taunting if not i would go for sven so that all the damage dealers are out of the way and you're just left with like olaf sven olaf kristoff and maybe that one other character um and my my go-to here is be prepared to have either taunt on beast already like if beast is like the last one to go and stage two make him taunt if you have that ability or try and save it for the first attack on phase uh, on the last phase here because without that they can just go attack whoever they want and sometimes they do like to favor like esmeralda versus position for instance so that's why i say have beast uh prepared for that taunt and that's going to go for every single phase that's my biggest tip and remember make sure you do not use quasimodo's uh first special because that's going to make him use protect uh, and you don't want it on him you kind of want to keep him alive because he can't take as much damage as beast now uh, in general the countering's done once you get rid of anna you're going to go for elsa and then sven and then you have Kristoff, Olaf, and the other guy. Usually the other guy is pretty much gone by that time because once you do the taunts and stuff like that, he's pretty much dead. He doesn't have as much health as the other uh, Frozen teammates. Now moving on to Big Hero 6. This one is quite a difficult one to do. Is I think really the first biggest challenge outside the Frozen team. Uh, and the Big Hero 6 one, the Sensational 6, and the Hercules team one, I would say are the harder three out of the five. And then Beast and Frozen are the easier two uh but in terms of the big hero six one you know once you get to the last stage of 
this node you're going to want to go for your kai and the tanks in the back because once you get rid of your kai then you get rid of all the spires and then after that you have the tanks and whatnot but the tanks are going to be taunting anyway so you're going to have to deal with them first anyways and i would actually save beast second um special here so they can steal that taunt hopefully by luck rng that you can steal it and then you will have to, you don't have to waste that taunt uh or at least you can have like one turn to recharge for that taunt uh, if you've already exhausted that resource and then uh once you finish off with the tanks you're going to go for the front row obviously i prefer going for gogo -Go so that all the damage is gone and then kind of flip flop between uh hero and or honey lemon and once you're done with that you're pretty much good and you're solid and you can get through there next one is gonna be the beauty and the beast so this one uh it's a fairly simple run to go through really once you get to the last stage you're just gonna go after beast and then after that it's really a free-for-all i would honestly leave like mrs potts for last and like cogsworth for last but uh cogsworth technically will probably be taunting so you may have to go from no matter what um so i would you know leave some of the other furniture for later but in general it's probably the easiest out of the five now we're going to moving on to 1d when you get to the last phase and this is where it gets really difficult and my suggestion is to go for big mud wolf and pete and then move on to like donald and daisy leave mickey for last um and kind of make and break it into like uh different phases like okay once get rid of pete and big bad wolf move on to donald daisy and Minnie. that's phase two then phase three is go for like goofy and pluto and after that we'll go for mickey and why do you want to leave mickey for last i leave mickey for last because i don't want him to give health to his teammates so that's why i go for the other guys and i will say in general mickey is kind of slow in this uh in this node for some reason so i think because there's so many characters on the battlefield he just ends up being the last one uh but he's not, he's not uh, uh, that fast and i definitely would recommend la leaving him for last because of course once you destroy him uh or defeat him he's going to be uh giving out health so my suggestion is even for last once you are done with this one you're going to go to the herc one this one you have those ghosts that are kind of annoying that can kind of like one shot as well in general actually a lot of these have one shotters so that's why you always want to have beast taunting because you can take those hits uh compared to having to go to like esmeralda or something like that uh but in, in general this one is going to be kind of it's going to be difficult because um pegasus is always going to be protecting with herc and stuff like that so try and get your attacks out to herc it's it's just a really hard node you also have to worry about hades because hades can do some really good damage as well uh but once you're able to get rid of herc for instance and hades it's kind of a free-for-all i would suggest going for pegasus after that and or pain and panic so your main targets are going to be herc and hades then pain and panic and pegasus then the rest of them of the other characters after that now honestly hermes you can just leave him for last because he's not going to be that much of a threat whatsoever but those are kind of like my biggest tips for you guys in terms of going through the ascension campaign uh and the the characters i would say all are very attainable that i suggested of course there are other teams you could go for uh if you're more of a payer then of course you can go for those teams that uh people generally would go for me using like namari very very useful and or uh, frollo another very useful one as well and he puts summonable characters on the field uh, but besides that you'll be able to go through this ascension campaign fairly easily i think once you're able to get through 1e and so hopefully this walkthrough and kind of telling you guys who to go for first in order and whatnot is going to be very very beneficial for you guys in order to get through here if you guys have any more questions or if you'd have better suggestions please go in the comments down below and uh, help us in the dsa community figure this out but this is, uh, this is this is how i was able to get through it i found it very successful and i'm three starring the rest of these slowly but surely as i continue to level up my kingdom team so anyways guys uh, if you found this helpful please definitely share it with your friends in tsa who are struggling with this and hopefully this can help them big time uh, in addition please like and subscribe guys we have just crossed over 300 subscribers and growing so if you can keep on growing and growing that would be great please share this with your clubs your friends and whatnot and i will catch you guys in the next video have a good one